It's so easy, Robert, for someone on the outside to look at your situation and, and feel grief and sadness and what, what could have been. And what, How have you been able to look at your own situation and, and find the joy? Mm -hmm. The last thing that I want from myself or anyone is pity. I do not want anyone to feel sorry for me. I don't want someone to look at me and start to feel sad and depressed and bad and think about what could have been. My life's incredible. My life's amazing. Um, I hope that when people look at me and they talk to me, they're, they're inspired. You know, they're inspired at what I've done and what they can go do in their lives. Um, and this story is not depressing and it's not sad, but it's happy and it's uplifting and it shows the good in humanity and the things that we can do. Um, that's what I want people to take away from it. And you know, it's amazing. When I talk to anyone, you know, or just to think about it, like what good could possibly come out of breaking your neck, right? I mean, nobody would raise their hand, say, yeah, sign me up, I'm ready to go for that. You think it'd be all bad, right? And it's just all that's happened to me, the people I've talked to, the hearts I've touched, breaking my neck, it's not the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Being able to touch someone's heart, inspire someone, that's not bad, man. that's a gift. In a way, breaking my neck is a gift that I never would have had the opportunity to inspire people and touch hearts like I have because of what happened on May 6th of 2017. So you know, now when I look back on these last three years and everything I've been through, all the dark moments, all the moments when I've just struggled, moments I've cried, uh, it's just all pride, it's pure pride. It, that it is. And, and you mentioned mental toughness. And another thing Jack said that really stuck with me is he said that, that your guys' definition, you know, like the program's definition of mental toughness is the ability to focus on the next most important thing. Right. And it's such a simple definition, but it's so beautiful. And it's exactly, it epitomizes how you've approached your situation. I, I know your journey is, is far from over. It's really just getting started. Tell us about what you're doing now, what's next. I know, uh, you know, a career as a motivational speaker was one of the things that you had talked about. Kind of update us on where all that lands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's cool. Now I'm really entering this next chapter of my life, you know, graduating, being at school. Um, those were all big boxes for me to check. Um, now I'm really excited. Like you said, I'm starting this full-time career in inspirational speaking. Um, like I said, this injury, in a way, has given me a gift, um, a gift to touch someone's heart and inspire someone's soul. And um, over the course of my college experience, and after my injury, people were asking, hey, Robert, can you come in and share your story, share your message, you know, give us some lessons on what's helped you battle through quadriplegia like this. Um, so I did, and they loved it, you know, standing ovations, they're laughing, they're crying. I mean, here I am sitting here thinking, wow, this is, this is a purpose. This is a real purpose, um, a mission from God to go and inspire others. And I'm going for it full time, um, sharing my story, um, all based around human performance, the way that we as humans overcome challenges and accomplish goals. Now, my challenges are visible. You know, what you see is what I have. Um, and I deal with it every single day. But for just about every other person I meet, their challenges aren't visible. And that doesn't mean that what they go through is insignificant. It just means that you can't see it. But this approach to overcoming adversity, I think is mostly universal. So the things that I use to overcome quadriplegia can be used by anyone to perform their best. So I'm excited about it. It's, it is my calling, I believe. And, um, and I just wanna inspire as many people as possible. That's absolutely what I'm in it for, is, uh, is changing people's lives. So I'm, I'm very happy that I've found this career pursuit, because um, I think there's a lot of people who go through life um, maybe not finding the thing that they're most passionate about. And uh, I found it at 23 years old, so I'm pretty excited about it. As a graduate of the class of 2020, I think you belong to kind of a unique group of young people who are going to be tested differently than, than a lot of other uh, graduating classes ever. What is your advice to all of those people who are being asked to go out into the world right now as the world sits here in a state of complete chaos and uncertainty, what, what's your advice for your fellow graduating seniors, whether it's high school, college? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think when something like this happens, when you have a plan and you're going for something and you up your game um, and then you get knocked on your back and the plan doesn't go the way that you want it, it's really easy to focus on the things that you don't have. 
Um, I certainly learned this lesson when I broke my neck. I couldn't play rugby anymore. I couldn't go to school. I couldn't see my friends. I could barely even breathe. Um, it was very easy to focus on all those things that I didn't have. And still to this day, there's a lot of things from my previous life from over three years ago um, that I don't have. And who knows if I'll ever have it. Um, I'm gonna fight like heck to make sure that does happen. But regardless, what really helped me through it was realizing all those things that I do have. Um, and when you really think about it, if you sit down and make a list, the amount of things you have to focus on that you do have and that do make you better is so much longer than the things that you don't have. Uh, controllables and uncontrollables is another way that I call it. The more power we give to these things that we can't control, the, le the, or the less power we can give to the things that we can actually do something about, you know, the things that are gonna make us better. Um, that's been such a big thing for me to think, you know, yeah, I might never be able to play rugby again, and I might not be able to go out running marathons. Um, but I can give my all every single day. I can always control that. And, um, and I encourage everybody who's graduating right now to just focus on that. What can you do? What do you have? Think about those things, not the things that you've lost and, uh, you know, that just aren't here anymore.